Here we have another demo of Opulent Voice. Uh, this time going over actual radio frequencies using this coaxial cable here to simulate the, the air. Um, I'm transmitting from this laptop running a Guinea Radio Flowgraph. It takes input from a file that was created by the OPV mod program. And it modulates it into FM because the mod program was designed to work with an FM transmitter. It doesn't have that actual modulation in it. But this generates the modulation and puts it out to the Pluto SDR. Also, some visualizers on the screen. After running it through this uh, channel model of degradation, so I have this all turned off. This one's yellow because it's bypassed. This one is just has its values set to, to no degradation. So we're still dealing with a fairly ideal channel. Here's the Pluto connected by USB to the laptop. And then the output from it goes into this, which is an RTL SDR uh, low cost receiver plugged into this Raspberry Pi 400, uh, which is one of the faster the Raspberry Pi family. And on this screen, you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to run this pipeline of commands on the Raspberry Pi. It starts with RTLSM, which is just a receiver that runs with the RTL SDR. Uh, this is the channel frequency that I've chosen. That would be a good channel in the band plan for Southern California for, for 900 megahertz. And the sample right here is 187 kilosamples per second. And then this just runs the OPV DMOD um, with no arguments. So it just tries to receive from the air, from the standard in, and puts audio out on standard out, which I then pipe to A play, which is the uh, audio player uh, connected with ALSA sound. Same sample rate, and this just specifies what the format is. So I will run that. Okay, so here is some messages from the RTL SDR. This is from uh, RTL FM. This is the first message coming from the demodulator. It's completed its initialization sample processing and is waiting to find a signal. Now over here on the laptop, I'm going to start the flow graph. And there it's transmitting. And now, after some acquisition, we have started to receive the signal. Each one of these punctuation marks here represents a frame. If it's a dot, it's a frame that was received just fine. If it's an exclamation point, it means we failed to receive the sync word, but we're able to go ahead anyway. And if you ever see a capital X there, it means that the frame was actually lost. Let me turn up the volume so you can hear it. Research. As we all know, these mean particular things. This is nearly perfect audio coming out of the receiver. Open source is a type of intellectual property management. Now, where this is a very minimal debug configuration. I can only see available. whether the frames are working or not. So let me interrupt that and run a slightly different version of this script that puts out diagnostic information as well. Now each frame actually not directly tied to frames, but about the same rate as a frame, is putting out one of these lines of, of text. We can see here that it's in, uh, has data carrier detect has been successfully received, and frequency offsets are really small. It's locked. The clock rate is nearly one, which is about right. These three numbers represent timing to the, uh, to the symbol, and if everything were completely perfect and locked in, like it is in simulation world, these would be constant. They would be 666 and it wouldn't be drifting. But you see it is drifting a little bit, but not very fast. That's a very tolerable rate of drift. And this number here, mark cost, is a metric from the Viterbi decoder. And as long as this stays a blow of uh, about 30, it's okay. And so we're receiving these frames just fine and that's confirmed by the fact that they sound good uh, we don't have this hooked up into uh, uh, a single unit for a transceiver yet but we do have receive transmit and receive going on uh, generated by the the code the c++ code and it's working over the air
And if we look at this window, this is a H top, which is showing usage. You can see that there are several different processes running RTLFM. This top one here is the actual uh, opulent voice code. And the total utilization here is a fraction of what's available. So even on a Raspberry Pi, we're not using up all the CPU. And if you look more carefully here at the at this chart, you can see a lot of it's going to the RTLFM processing and only about 25% of one of the four CPUs is being used by opulent voice processing. So very scalable.